think it's safe to say we've now reached an inflection point with the whole Bethesda being Bethesda thing. With Shattered Skies getting the same kind of Metacritic scores as Fallout 76, I think we can all kind of get together and say, hey, maybe Bethesda aren't making great games anymore. It's finally time to say the Emperor has no clothes, or in this case, T Todd Howard has no clothes. Oh, I don't want that image in my mind. But being the hot-blooded manly type that makes videos on the internet, that's not enough for me. I want to know who's to blame. And after doing a whole five minutes of reflection before making this video, I've come to a conclusion. I think it might be us. I think there might have been a toxic positivity surrounding Bethesda and their games for the past decade or more that has led to Todd Howard thinking that he could fly too close to the moon. On the internet that our games have had a few bugs. I did. I read it on the internet, so it's true. To see why, I think we really need to recap the history of Bethesda reaching this point. Back when Daggerfall came out in 1996, before Todd was the creative lead of the company, it was a success, a surprise hit from a reasonably small developer, one of the first fully 3D RPGs, and it sold pretty well amongst RPG enthusiasts and people that could run a 3D game at that point in time, mind you. But it wouldn't be until the release of Morrowind in 2002 that the studio really started to pick up some mainstream credibility. But keep in mind that this was still for a reasonably niche audience of the people that play RPGs on a PC. And in that year, Neverwinter Nights still won RPG of the Year from a lot of publications. Successful Bethesda were, but they were no Nintendo or Activision. It wouldn't be until the release of The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion in 2006 that Bethesda would really become a household name for making RPGs, to the point that back in 2006, I did not know a single person who gamed on a console, a computer, or anywhere that was not playing The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. Oblivion, in my opinion, was really the height of Bethesda's success in many ways. Each game was just iterating on the other and everything was up and up from there. But what had also happened around 2006, 2007 was that gaming was becoming more mainstream and there were more people out there with the success of titles like Call of Duty that wanted a game to play than ever before. And Bethesda, with their next two titles, were ready to grab that casual audience. With the release of Fallout 3 and The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim. At this point, you might be asking me, Old Man Banjo, stop with the recap. Why are you going here? Let me explain why. Because I want to point out a simple thing that Daggerfall has in common with even modern Bethesda games. In Daggerfall, you walk into a loadable area, like a dungeon or a room, and then you walk back out into the open world. You journey through the open world, and then talk to people, and then go kill things, and then turn in quests, and then go walk, and load into an area, and then kill things, and then turn in a quest. This is the same pattern for Oblivion and Morrowind as well. Walk place, load into area, click on thing till it dies, turn in quest. But what made no one ever bat an eyelash and think this is an incredibly simplistic style of game that is incredibly boring was the amazingly crafted worlds and the complex potential provided by the RPG systems in games like Daggerfall and Morrowind. Now Skyrim fully put into that. Whatever you think about Skyrim, I love the game. I have a love-hate relationship with it. It killed a lot of the RPG complexity. It brought a lot of people into the space, had fun in the game, but we have to admit, Skyrim was the step down the road, that bit where Todd Howard took Virgil's hand and began to descend the steps into the mountain, into the nine circles of hell. Because what eventually will happen with the Skyrim style of game is that everyone realizes they're just walking from one loading area into the next, clicking on something until it dies and then turning in a quest. The engine used for Morrowind, the Gamebryo engine back in 2004, is the same engine that is being used in Starfield, albeit with updates upon updates upon updates of band-aids and old chewing gum and dental floss. Now, people have been asking, why haven't Bethesda thought to change or improve on their engine and way of making games for the past decade or more? But the answer is so obvious once you think about it, it's not worth asking. Because of us. Because the gaming consumer at large has been consuming their games regardless. And frankly, a lot of the time, in my case, having fun anyways. 
right up until the point that it just went too far. After years and years of supporting Bethesda games, which are buggy but will be fixed by mods, with bad UI interfaces that will be fixed by mods, with buggy quests that will be fixed by mods, with, with bad gameplay aspects will be, be improved upon by modders, in the end, it's all become exhausting. And Starfield is a game that is a summary of that exhaustion. All these years of the consumer just having fun anyways led Todd Howard to think that he could be Sean Murray from Hello Game. With all due respect to Todd Howard, Todd Howard is basically just the most prolific Morrowind modder in history. A mathematical and coding genius like Sean Murray, he is not. And it is us, the gamer, in our innocent love of just spanking one more ice troll and turning in one more quest and taking one more bad line of dialogue and laughing at it and turning it into a meme, instead of just saying, wait, there's an overall lack of competency. We convinced Todd Howard that he could fly to the moon, and now his wings have been burnt by that silvering light, and he's going to come crashing down to Earth. I have no doubt that the next Elder Scrolls game and the next Fallout game will both be reasonably good-sized successes, financially speaking at least. But the soul is gone, and people can just see Bethesda games now for what they are, husks of very little innovation, who thrived off using the same formula over and over again until it wouldn't work anymore. Well, you know who also did that? Telltale Games. They made the same Telltale game over and over and over again with the same license over and over and over again until people just stopped saying, no, I already have six of those in my Steam library that I haven't finished, and my friend gave me another one for Christmas because everyone seems to think I love Telltale Games now, but seriously, after five of them, it was enough. Now, Bethesda is certainly a well-off company that is not going to go bankrupt the way Telltale Games did. But there's something true about the story, something true about making the same product over and over and over again with small iterations until one day everyone just realizes, hey, I don't want that anymore. Todd Howard said that Starfield should be a forever game and that they always seek to make forever games. But here's the thing about forever games. I still love playing Oblivion. I still love playing Morrowind and Skyrim. They are forever games. But how many forever games do you really need? Once you have enough forever games that you're playing forever, you don't necessarily need more. I don't really want another Elder Scrolls game that's exactly like the Elder Scrolls games we've already had without any innovation, simply making the game simpler and simpler and simpler in order to obtain the widest possible audience because God knows almost everyone on the planet who games has already bought one copy of all the other Elder Scrolls games. I think there must be a lot of confusion at Bethesda at the moment as to why Shattered Skies wasn't received well or why Fallout 76 wasn't received well or heck, why Starfield wasn't received very well. Remember when they came out with those really weird tweets telling people how good the game was and what they should think about it? There's clearly an incredible level of groupthink, but how could they not have it? We've really enjoyed their games over the past 15 years. We put fun ahead of critical assessment, which is what we should do as gamers. We're not paid to be critics. We're paid to have fun. I mean, we're not paid. We're actually paying them for it. But you get my point. And now we're at a point where this fun has just started to stop. And I have no idea what Bethesda can do to claw that back. In the end, the endless positivity around Bethesda kind of stopped them from innovating because they never felt the need and... Now I think it's probably just too late for them. If you watch this far into the video, do like and subscribe. I know it doesn't do much for the YouTube algorithm anymore, but as a gamer, I do enjoy seeing the numbers go up. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then, peace. Oh, I need to get Todd Howard out of my mind now. Why did I do this to myself?